Welcome to the tutorial on working with InfraWorks data in City Engine. In this tutorial, we're going to look at exporting InfraWorks models in a format that City Engine can read, importing InfraWorks models into City Engine with correct projections and offsets, and using the terrain brush in City Engine to adjust elevations. To start, I'm working with a model here in InfraWorks, as you can see, that includes buildings and it has some terrain. I'm going to want to export this model into City Engine so that I can use it within the City Engine environment. To do this, I'm going to click on Present and Share. And then when I click on Export 3D Model, I have a whole lot of settings here that I can choose. So I'm going to say that I want to use the entire model. The target coordinate system is really important to set here because we need to make sure that the coordinate system that's being set in InfraWorks is the same coordinate system that we're going to be using in City Engine. In this case, I'm using UTM8417N. Note that in InfraWorks, sometimes the coordinate system name is slightly different to the coordinate systems that Esri products use, but we need to make sure that the UTM8417N coordinate system is still used between both applications. I have the option here of how I want to export the files, and I'm going to select multiple files. This way, I can individually export the ground and the buildings. So here, I'm going to set a location. I'm going to call this OBJ export. And then with my ground and buildings, I'm going to give those names within that folder. And I'll make it ground. And I'm going to change the save as type from FBX to Wavefront Files OBJ. The reason for exporting as OBJ instead of FBX is because with OBJ, the textures come through a bit more cleanly in City Engine. I'm going to make sure that I export materials and textures as well. And then when I click export, it can take a few minutes to run through this process. Now that the file has been successfully exported, if I check in Windows Explorer, I can see the OBJ export folder is now populated with my OBJ file, material file, as well as a POS file for each of the building and ground files, as well as texture folders containing textures for the different buildings and ground textures. I'm going to switch into City Engine now, and I'll create a new project. I'll call it InfraWorks. City Engine. And then I'll create a new scene. Call it InfraWorks Data. And this is where I'm going to choose the correct coordinate system, which is the same coordinate system that I use to export my data in InfraWorks. So because I'm working in a Toronto area, the coordinate system that I'm using was UTM17N. So I'm going to continue to choose that same coordinate system in City Engine here by going to WGS84, UTM17N. And this is the same coordinate system that we exported the data from in InfraWorks. The next thing that I'll do before I import my InfraWorks data is I'm going to add in some base imagery and terrain from City Engine. To do that, I'll click on File, Get Map Data, and I'll type in my area of interest. I'm going to choose here that I will get the terrain at a high resolution as well as the base map at a high resolution, and I'll click OK. Now that I've imported my terrain and imagery through City Engine, I'm going to add in the files that were exported from InfraWorks. So here's the OBJ export folder that contains the files that were exported from InfraWorks. And I'm just going to drag and drop that into the data folder of my InfraWorks City Engine project. This will create a copy of the files and folders within my City Engine project folder so that I can reference them within the City Engine scene. 
Before I import the OBJ files, I need to make sure that I am importing them with the correct offsets that InfraWorks used when the files were exported. In order to see what the offsets are, I need to look at the POS file that was exported as well. So if I right click on here and I say open with text editor, I can see that in the coordinate section of this file, there's an X, Y, and Z value. This is the value that I need to use when I'm importing the data into City Engine. So I'm going to right click on buildings.obj and I'll say import. I'll uncheck align to terrain because in this case, I already had a terrain model in InfraWorks and I want to import that into my city engine model as well. And I don't want it realigning to the city engine model. And then in the X offset, I'm going to enter in the coordinate value that you see on the left, which is 6304339375. And then because city engine uses a Y value as up, which is different to some other 3D programs that use Z value as up, I need to take the Y value that InfraWorks used, which is 4833985, and enter that in as a negative Z offset in City Engine. And this is just something that we need to do when we're translating between InfraWorks values and City Engine values. So I'm going to type in here negative 4833985. I'll click Finish. And now you can see that the buildings have been imported correctly. And then I'll do the same thing with my ground.obj file by saying import, unchecking align to terrain, and giving that same x offset and negative z offset. You can see that a terrain has been imported into City Engine. It's a triangulated terrain. And if you look at the terrain as it sits on the City Engine terrain, you'll see that there's some conflict between the materials. In order to fix this, we can use the terrain editing brush. The terrain editing brush was introduced into City Engine's 2021 release, and it allows us to adjust the terrain so that we can correct any issues that we see here. So in order to fix these problems, what I'm going to do is click on the terrain brush, and then I'm going to choose elevation picker on my right hand side here. I'm going to click somewhere in my model. And I can see that the elevation height is 89 meters. So what I want to do is I want to sync the terrain that is conflicting with my InfraWorks imported terrain to a value that is lower than 89 meters. So I'm going to make it 85 meters. Now when I click and paint, what I'm doing is I'm causing the terrain to sink to a level of 85 meters, and it reveals the terrain that was imported through InfraWorks. We want to make sure that we're reducing the conflicts of what we're seeing in the InfraWorks data as it conflicts with the City Engine data. And so all we're doing here is we're just applying this brush to correct any issues that we're seeing in the scene. If we look below the scene, you can see that what's actually happening is all of the terrain is being pushed down below the InfraWorks model, triangulated model that was imported. So I can continue to do this for the entire model here to correct these issues. And once I have corrected all of these issues, I've now successfully imported my InfraWorks model into City Engine. And there we have it. I can now continue to work in the City Engine environment with my InfraWorks model successfully imported, and I can start to add in parameterized data and City Engine rules to add more enhanced features to my scene. I can also export this into ArcGIS Online for further visualization on the web. To find additional resources relating to 3D modeling, City Engine, and other Esri products, you can check out the Esri Canada Higher Education Resource Finder at hed.esri.ca resources. Here, you can find a whole variety of resources and tutorials that are available to you to continue your learning in the Esri environment. If you're interested in 3D GIS and City Engine projects, you can check out Esri Canada's 3D City Model resource website at 3dcitymodels.esri.ca. Here, you will find a whole variety of City Engine models that you can download, as well as rules, tutorials, videos, and resources that relate to your projects.